Welcome everyone to this lecture on feature interactions. So this is uh, the ninth lecture of our product line course and uh, the slides are joint work with uh, Timo Kehre and Elias Küter. And uh, uh, my, uh, my name is Thomas Thüm and I will guide you through this lecture. So we've been talking about other topics during this lecture already in other dedicated lectures. We talked, for instance, about ad hoc approaches uh, for variability. Um, so in terms of runtime variability or clone and own, but we also talked about modeling and implementing features, uh, modeling features in terms of a feature model and a couple of implementation techniques and also the development process in uh, yeah in product lines or a development a possible development process for software product lines we haven't discussed so far are topics like quality assurance and we will discuss those in the third part of the lecture series in more detail and this is the first lecture in this uh, third part of the lecture series and we will talk about feature interactions today so mainly this gives this like the uh, introduction and the motivation also for the next two lectures where we uh, want to identify uh, how to analyze, how to test product clients in a way that we can make sure that there are no feature interactions or reduce the amount of feature interactions. So in this lecture, we will talk about what is a feature interaction and why should we care? Uh, why is it a problem for uh, software product clients? We will talk about how to handle feature interactions, how to implement feature interactions, wanted feature interactions. And then in the third part, we have a, a brief uh, overview how to avoid feature interactions. What can we do um, to not run into feature interactions? So I will give you some examples in the first part uh, for feature interactions. So one feature interaction that occurred to me in uh, 2020 was that we ordered some merchandising. So from University of Ulm, so we ordered some merchandising uh, and there are different uh, designs available. So you can uh, have different uh, logos, different uh, in different colors. Uh, but also um, like in black or white, and then you have different uh, colors also for the clothes themselves. So there are platforms to do this customization, uh, and this is just one example. And the question is, what is the problem, right? So we can just make our selection, we can order something, and uh, the problem uh, is uh, unfortunately uh, only available in the slide on German, uh, but I will guide you through this. Um, so after uh, putting the order uh, i received an email and the email basically said well uh, we've looked at your order and we've seen that there's an unwanted feature interaction so they didn't they didn't call it feature interaction but that's what i'm doing now uh, and the problem is that a certain color for the foreground, if you want so, and a certain color for the background, they do not match. So the contrast is not high enough to see something. And then there's also, when there's a problem, we also need a solution. So the, the solution um, that they proposed was either to make a new selection for the colors, like either for the foreground or the background uh, of the t-shirt or polo, uh, uh, sweatshirt, and uh, or to just stay with the colors uh, selected previously. So here's uh, the uh, thing that we ordered uh, back then. Uh, that's uh, kind of, uh, you can see that uh, the logo is not very uh, visible, uh, uh, that the contrast is not high enough. And we've had actually two instances of the problem. And for one instance, uh, we decided to stay with the same product. And for another product, we decided to choose another background where the contrast is higher. Why is this interesting? Why is this interesting for the product line course? Uh, we will have, uh, there are similar uh, interactions actually in software also, especially when it comes to uh, dark mode. Uh, from time to time, we have some problems here in our, uh, uh, in our slides because in the dark mode, uh, some things are not that good visible. Um, anymore. But over here, it's interesting to look at when this feature interaction was found and identified. And in this case, the contrast is checked for each order. 
So when you recap in the last lecture, we talked about domain and application engineering, and we want to have as much as possible effort in domain engineering. Uh, this is actually done in application engineering. So for every order, it's checked whether the contrast is good enough. And if it's good enough, so there's a human uh, basically checking this and then uh, I guess so at least. And then um, uh, these, uh, it's, it's not done in domain engineering, but it would be feasible to do this in domain engineering and already uh, asked the one that creates these uh, logos, creates these combinations of backgrounds and foregrounds uh, to make a decision whether this is something that should be uh, possible to order. So this, uh, it could be that this feature interaction is actually checked repeatedly if uh, such uh, low contrast is chosen by multiple customers. So there's another interaction that uh, I uh, came across a couple of years ago. Uh, so on my smartphone, this was an Android uh, phone back then, uh, I've used uh, Skype and I've also used a baby monitor. So what the baby monitor was able to do is I could leave my phone uh, near the baby and when the baby is yelling or making some noises or getting awake, then uh, the phone would call me or call another phone uh, that I can choose. So why is there the problem? Um, the problem was uh, this worked out uh, quite well. Um, and uh, of course, when you, uh, you have a small baby and uh, you have installed this baby monitor, you will check uh, several times whether this works or not. So we checked uh, and we've done this like uh, 30 times or something like this. And then what happened is there was an update to the Skype app. And the Skype, the update of the Skype app basically injected whenever you want to do a call with a certain message, and I don't have a screenshot of that message, but uh, it's, it's something like this. Do you want to make this uh, phone call? Whenever you make a phone call, do you want to make this phone call using Skype or not? Okay, you might be able to guess what happens in this case. So the problem is that our baby was actually not uh, able to answer this question, uh, was not able to reach it or even uh, see the phone. Um, so the problem was that the baby was yelling and after a while we found out, so the baby is uh, alive, it's healthy. Um, but the question is, who to blame for this, right? Is it up to the parents that uh, should check every time whether it works? Uh, is it up to Skype because they did an update and uh, they, they should take care of these unwanted feature interaction? Is it a problem of the baby monitor? Uh, because the app should make sure that the call is actually uh, going out. And the problem is with these open ecosystems with apps that can interfere with each other is that actually no one is responsible for this uh, or kind of no one is responsible, but obviously um, the uh, problems uh, like this can occur. And of course, um, there are many other possible ways in which apps on an app store can interact in an unwanted way and we need to be aware of this that any pair of apps can potentially interact in some unwanted ways so and the question is i mean in android i checked uh, this is a while ago i checked there were 3.5 million android apps probably there are more uh, by now um, who to blame, where to document even this interaction, right? So we came across this interaction, so we, it would be good to tell other parents uh, to be careful. Um, it, there, of course, there could be a warning uh, when using the baby monitor app or something like this, but um, yeah, this uh, is actually not easy also where to document this interaction. So you've seen several examples now of feature interactions, and I would like to uh, yeah, uh, step back a bit and we want to introduce what is a feature interaction. A feature interaction between two or more features is an emergent behavior that cannot be easily deduced from the behaviors associated with the individual features involved. So that's a definition by uh, the uh, main book used in this course uh, by Arpe and others. 
So basically for short interaction, um, uh, we will call this an interaction. And the, the basic thing is that there's some unexpected thing in here. So uh, of course, uh, when we have implemented a feature and we have implemented another feature, uh, we are kind of expecting that we can also use them together. And this also works out in the most cases, but in some cases, there's some new emerging behavior when bringing certain features together, which is unwanted. So in the case of the baby monitor, it's unwanted that the call is not going out. Uh, so there could be, for instance, a timer uh, that uh, if you're not answering this, uh, this question, this dialogue from the Skype app uh, within like five seconds or 10 seconds, then it will automatically use the phone, for instance. And there's another term. Uh, inadvertent interaction and inadvertent inter feature interaction occurs when a feature influences the behavior of another feature in an unexpected way. For example, regarding the expected control flow program or data state or visible behavior. And um, the, the, while this is uh, one possible term, we will have a rather simplified view here in this lecture. We will rather talk about wanted and unwanted interaction. It's not that easy to always to, to decide, but basically what I've shown you in the previous examples were all unwanted interactions. And um, uh, basically we want to avoid, we want to identify unwanted interactions and we want to turn unwanted into wanted interactions uh, or resolve them somehow. So uh, then we come to the feature interaction problem. So the feature interaction problem is to detect, manage, and resolve feature interactions among features, especially inadvertent uh, feature interactions among features, because there are feature interactions that are actually wanted, where we want to have this kind of interaction, but there are also cases where it's unwanted. And the feature interaction problem is mainly devoted to those uh, unwanted feature interactions. So feature interactions will actually be a topic of this lecture, um, uh, also in the other two parts, uh, as I mentioned before, but also in the next two lectures, in lecture 10 and lecture 11. So in the uh, next two lectures, we will discuss how to detect feature interactions. And for the remainder of this lecture, we will assume that we already detected the feature interaction. We already found out there is an interaction between the baby monitor and the Skype app, or we identified that there is an interaction uh, among some other features. And in the second part, we are trying to resolve interactions. And in the third part, how to manage those interactions. What can management do uh, with respect to feature interactions? So what we'll do next in the, in the uh, remainder of this uh, first part of this lecture, we will talk about other kinds of interactions. So we want to understand, these were some examples, but I will guide you to further examples that we understand. Interaction can also occur during the absence of features. Interactions can occur in source code because we've rather looked at uh, um, uh, products in a product line from the outside view, but we will look into the actual source code. And there are also interactions with the base code. So not always uh, we have optional features that can both be combined, but there are also interactions of an optional feature with uh, the base implementation. So let's come to a common interaction of toasters. I guess that most of you are familiar with toasters, but basically they're working like this. So you have a toaster, you have some toast, you put the toast into the toaster, then you hit the, the button over here, and then you have to wait a bit. And then after a while, typically pretty surprisingly, uh, it will jump out and you can eat the toast. And if you're lucky, then you will also uh, hit the sweet spot of like uh, when the the toast is ready. So this is uh, like how it is supposed to be, how it is supposed to work, and how the toast is supposed to look like probably. But what happens if we only, I mean, we're not that hungry anymore, and we only want to put one toast in there? And you can try uh, what happens with your toaster if you have one, and you have if you have toast available right now, and 
I would tell you what happens with this toaster. Uh, this is the toaster by Elias. Thanks for making all the pictures. And this is what happened uh, with one toast with the same settings. So what basically happens is that if one toast is absent, there is more heat from one side. So, and from this side, the toast will actually get burned more. And this is an unwanted interaction. Uh, so what happens here is we basically have no interaction for when we put in two toasts, which is shown here, or if we don't put any toast at all. Okay, you could say that's just a waste of energy. Why not putting any toast in there and uh, pressing it? But you could also have like something on top, uh, many toasters supporting this. So for the other hand, uh, for the other side, it's actually independent whether we put this toast on the left hand side or the right hand side. Uh, the result will be an unwanted interaction in both cases. And we can even uh, also uh, formulate this uh, by means of propositional logic. So we do have a problem if uh, one feature is there and the others is not. Uh, and these are the two possible interactions that we can have here. So you see that like <clears throat> in this example, because of the absence of a feature, a feature interaction is triggered. And we will see similar cases in source code and with preprocessors. Of course, we are not talking about toaster product lines uh, in detail, but about software product lines. So we will look at a source code example. You could use some time now, pause the video and inspect the source code and see what it's doing. Uh, we have. Again, a uh, graph implementation, it's just a small excerpt uh, where we have edges. Uh, there's also some other class where nodes are defined. So an edge has a first and a second node. Um, it, has, it might have some weight. It's dependent on the preprocessor uh, directive uh, weighted. Then we have uh, a method to create a new edge. We have an equals method where we can compare two edges. And then we have to say, when are those um, edges equal? And this depends on whether we have directed or undirected edges. And then we have a simple test over here. And the test basically uh, tries to find out whether our implementation is correct or not. So we can choose a selection of features and then generate a product. And we can run this program. Everything works perfect. So what do we now know? So after testing, one, having this one test case uh, for this one product, for this one configuration, uh, the, the test case will be successful in this case. Uh, and we will probably not uh, find any problems for this configuration over here. If you spot any, just uh, write in the comments below the video. So um, the problem is that some of the interactions are dependent on the selection of features, so they might not always occur. So for instance, if we select a graph uh, with undirected edges, without weights, without the algorithm for optimal uh, uh, connections, we will, it will turn out that we have used um, the weight, but it's actually not there. Um, so it was defined over here but it's removed in this variant, so it's not there. So uh, the compiler would complain for this configuration that certain that the, uh, the field weight or the variable weight is not defined. So the problem with this is that we need to uh, take this configuration, we need to generate the product and compile it in order to find it. We will talk about smarter ways in the next lecture. Um, but and the problem uh, occurs only for this uh, particular uh, configuration. So actually, I need to rephrase the last sentence. Uh, it does not occur only for this configuration, but it occurs whenever directed and weighted are both not selected. So there's another possible configuration that we can choose. And in this small excerpt of the code, we would actually have the same generated code over here. And so we would also have the same interaction. And this is quite typical that such a feature interaction in a product line does not only occur in one particular configuration, but it rather occurs in a subset of the available configuration. So it's triggered by certain features, but not all the possible features. 
So then we have another example here, and this is an example uh, where we have another kind of uh, uh, error here. Um, and uh, what we've chosen, we've chosen all the possible features over here. Um, and yeah, this product cannot be uh, compiled. Uh, we have uh, we are missing basically a bracket and a semicolon over here, and this problem occurs for every um, yeah I need to check for every configuration where the feature directed is selected because if the feature directed is selected this directive saying if not uh, directed is chosen. Uh, then we will find this problem. So this problem uh, is basically an interaction of the feature directed together with the base implementation, because it's only dependent on whether we select uh, this feature over here. So whenever we select the feature directed, the source code over here will be removed, and then the problem will occur over here. So that's interesting, because a feature interaction can actually happen not only for two or more features, but also for one feature with a base implementation. And if you uh, consider preprocessors, we typically have, don't have a feature for the base implementation. If you would look into another implementation technique, for instance, like feature modules and feature under programming, we could have another feature for the base implementation. Then it's a two-wise, an interaction of uh, two features, but over here it's rather an interaction of one feature with the base implementation. And then the question, are there further uh, problems in this source code? And you might have spotted this problem already uh, earlier. Uh, there's another problem which cannot be found by means of the compiler, but rather at one time. So if we execute the test case uh, for this particular configuration, then we will find out that there's some problems. So we are getting the wrong result for the assert statement. And the reason is actually that over here, we should have written e.second. And this was, of course, uh, introduced uh, to illustrate uh, different cases. So this is, now it's the question, is this actually an interaction? Um, so, um, so what we uh, configured here, again, this is a configuration for directed weighted. Uh, I think this is a mistake here. Um, this needs to be uh, written like undirected uh, because the source code over here is uh, over there. So um, this is a configuration for undirected and weighted edges. Uh, the projects can be com uh, uh, product can be compiled after preprocessing. Uh, it's not a static interaction, so the compiler will not complain about this, uh, but uh, it's basically a defect in the base source code uh, because it's always there. Um, but of course, it's kind of only visible whenever we can compile it. So basically, this interaction is a bit more tricky to describe. So uh, when it occurs, so basically it occurs whenever we can compile the program, so we need to collect all the other interactions that we have that do not allow us to compile the program. And for the all the remaining configurations, uh, we have this problem. So it's not that easy. And we, in this case, we could argue that this is not an interaction at all, because whenever we are able to compile, this will be a problem for the program. When it comes to the detection of such interactions, we will look at static interactions in lecture 10, look at dynamic interactions in lecture 11, and in the next, we will look at inter interactions of more than two features. And interactions of more than two features are known as higher order interactions, uh, and we have different kinds of interactions. Uh, we already talked about wanted and unwanted interactions. So most of the examples that we've seen uh, so far are basically unwanted interactions. Uh, we will also uh, see some wanted later on. Uh, we've seen static and dynamic interactions. Um, and then we can also distinguish by the amount, by the number of features that are interacting. So for instance, a one-wise interaction could be 
uh, a faulty feature implementation of a single feature. So whenever we choose the feature, we have a problem, or it could be an interaction of a feature with a base code. So that's a one wise interaction. It might be a bit confusing uh, to use the term interaction if, if it's uh, only a faulty feature, but that's basically what the literature does so far. And uh, pairwise interaction, that's an interaction of two features and we have higher order interactions if it's an interaction between more than two features. And then it's interesting to, to see more examples uh, of real world interactions in source code. And if you're interested in this, I would point you to the variability bug database. So the idea is to um, yeah, whenever we find interactions in certain uh, systems, then we document those and others can inspect those interactions. And this is especially interesting for research to think about new techniques and evaluate techniques that um, are focusing on interactions, detecting them or resolving them. Um, and over here we see that there are uh, 43 interactions uh, for Linux documented, uh, for the Apache web server, there are 23. Uh, for BusyBox, there are 18. And uh, for the 3D printer uh, firmware Marlin, there are 14. So basically, what we can see from this is it's not a problem. Feature interactions is not a problem of a certain domain, but it's a basic problem for uh, any product line. And interestingly, not all the possible uh, combinations of features uh, or interactions occur. Uh, by the same frequency, but what we see is that certain interactions are more frequent in the literature. So what we can see in this table, there are different patterns, and actually most of the interactions are only occurring if all the features are positive, right? So the interaction only occurs if the, if the features are selected. Then there are some cases, and these are also uh, almost uh, about the same size, where if one feature is deselected, but all the others are selected, then this interaction uh, occurs. And uh, this basically means, uh, or one potential reason for this could be that the more features you select, typically you have more code, right? I've shown you uh, the preprocessor example on the previous slide where it was actually different. So if we choose directed, we will have less code in the in the source code, but the typical ways you have more source code. So there are more possible ways how the different statements, how the source code can interact with each other. So that's a possible interpretation of the results. But there are also some cases where all the features are, um, uh, are deselected and then only the problem occurs. But these are very seldom compared to the other interactions. What we can also see from this table that it's very unlikely that all the features of our product line interact. So these patterns uh, basically uh, say that most of the interactions are occurring between a pair of um, uh, different options. Um, there might be uh, or about this, uh, the same uh, for a single um, uh, for a single feature and its selection, but the uh, higher uh, interactions, like three wise, there are only six over here, uh, and between five features, there are only so this, these higher in the, uh, uh, higher order feature interactions are much more seldom in practice. Let's look at uh, some other work that is uh, interesting uh, to inspect and to understand interactions, and interactions might not only come. Uh, when we have preprocessor statements, so we have another example here of runtime variability, and then we can also have uh, and inspect interactions. So what happens in this example is that we have uh, uh, yeah, some uh, generation of HTML uh, source code, and it's dependent on some, uh, or the HTML page that is resulting depends on some uh, features, uh, so we can have smileys, then smileys are replaced by nice pictures uh, in the uh, string that we are presenting uh, on the website. Uh, we might also have some weather in addition, uh, and weather has a particular placeholder where it's uh, inserted the uh, weather forecast, 
uh, and we might have some other things like statistics or we might want to choose whether we want to have Fahrenheit or Celsius uh, as the, the temperature shown on the website. So this is a made up example, but it shows that already like a low number of uh, features can interact in uh, uh, in severe ways and in unwanted ways. So what we can see here on the right hand side for this particular program is one run through the program with one time variability. So this is we give the program um, a particular input. Uh, we let the program run. So this program doesn't have any input. So it's uh, just static uh, based on uh, the Boolean values that we hear and what we did in, we built a, a special tool in order to make this, uh, this statistics and this diagram on the right hand side. And what this tool does is basically simultaneously executing all the possible values for the features or for the Boolean values uh, written over here. So the question is, how much does our execution depend on the configuration of those Boolean variables? And we will see, and uh, uh, there are uh, different aspects here. Let's first look at the uh, interaction in terms of um, the interaction degree in terms of the data. So what does it mean? If we go through this, uh, through the uh, statements, uh, so if we start with uh, statement four, statement four is over here. Uh, we will execute the statement and it's independent of Boolean variables. Uh, the content that we will get in the variable C is independent uh, of any selections of those features. Uh, so we have no interaction on the data and we also have no varying control flow. This actually changes for statement number five. So we can see here that there's some interaction on the data. Um, and the reason is that we are accessing this variable here. This, the variable is called smiley and it's indicating whether the website is supposed to replace smileys or not. And this variable actually has two values. So either true or false. So we have an interaction on data, but the statement in line five is always executed. So the control flow is not different. And then we say, can see in the next line, and line number seven, so that's indicated over here. We rather have uh, the other case that there's still some interaction in data, but not in control flow. Uh, uh, no, it's, I was confused now. Uh, so we are talking about statement six now. In statement six, uh, we have an interaction control flow. So this line uh, with, uh, 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 with the number six, uh, this line is only executed depending on a certain condition. So we have some interaction on control flow. So this, the control flow is actually dependent on those variables, on the variable smiley. So we have an interaction there. So there's always one control flow and there's always one kind of data in a variable. And the green color basically shows us when uh, we have more than one value, so uh, a value uh, interaction degree of one basically means there are at least there are two values. And for the control flow, it means there are two possible ways how the control flow can happen at this particular place. So, and then uh, you can uh, look and guide yourself uh, through the rest of the program, but I would like to inspect one more uh, 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 statement because it's interesting. So let's look at the interactions for line uh, number nine over here. So what happens here is we only have a con interaction of control flow by means of one particular uh, feature. So whether we execute the statement in line nine only depends on the feature weather. So the interaction degree on control flow is one because there are two possible control flows. Either we execute this line nine or we don't execute it. But the interaction degree on the data is much higher. So actually we can have four possible values and the four possible values come from the fact that the value is dependent on the feature weather. Because if we have the feature weather, 
uh, we will uh, execute the line number nine. And if we don't execute line number nine, then the value, the string C will actually have another value. But it's also dependent on the feature smiley, as we can see over here, because the feature smiley was executed earlier. So it has an influence on the data stored in the variable C. And in addition to this, uh, we have uh, something that is rather hidden. So we have a method call over here of the method get weather. So which we basically called over here. And there's another uh, feature that is uh, changing the value over here. And this is the, um, the feature uh, Fahrenheit, which will also influence our data. So now I guided you through all the different colors. We will ignore the, the color blue for now. Uh, it basically is a minimal uh, degree of interaction we need to uh, take care of during execution in our uh, special uh, program analysis tool. But uh, this is not interesting here. So let's focus on green and red. And we will look at larger systems. So what happens for these larger systems is actually quite interesting. So these are all systems with like, uh, uh, yeah, about 100 features. It's varying a bit, but not all of those features interact. So we can see from the axis that in most of the cases, we only have a couple of features interacting. Uh, for instance, the elevator over here is, um, uh, yeah, the one example in the feature ID book. So we came up with this example. Uh, uh, we made up the source code. Uh, still, we, we hope that it's uh, reasonable for, for something that is occurring in practice. And what we can see over here is that as well, control flow and data flow are actually dependent on, the in, on some interactions. But in, in, the po in, in all the possible execution, in, in, one, in this one execution of the elevator, we can see that only uh, uh, there's an interaction of at most five degree of five. And this is, does not mean that five features are interacting, but green means again that there are six different uh, values uh, for the possible interactions and the same for control flow. So only a couple of features influence how the control flow looks like. And we can see similar patterns also for other systems. Uh, GPL is an implementation of the graph product line that we are also using as an example. Uh, which is interesting because there's some close to the end over here in this execution, there's some higher interaction degree of even nine. So if there would be a problem in this particular position, in this particular statement, it could mean that um, yeah, up to uh, yeah, uh, nine different or 10 different values uh, exist uh, uh, for a certain uh, data or for a certain variable. Uh, we have another instance, uh, Quival is an uh, evaluation framework for index structures in databases. We have Prevailer, which is the database, and we have CheckStyle, which is also interesting because it's a program for checking for uh, problems in your source code. And you can configure it. You can tell which configure, uh, which uh, yeah, styles to look for, for which problems to look for. And it's interesting that it reaches a quite high interaction degree, but only at a certain position, like over here, we're reaching a quite high degree. But afterwards, it's getting back uh, to a very low degree of interactions. And we looked at this uh, in more detail, and we found out that in this case, uh, the, uh, there's a counter saying how many uh, issues have we find in your have we found in your source code, and this variable is of course dependent on all the possible found errors uh, in the previous control flow. So there's a large interaction over here, and this interaction is then uh, turned into uh, yeah uh, some high data and control flow interactions. So the, but the basic insight, and we will. We use this information in the next two uh, lectures and especially in lecture 11 is that not all the features interact. Some statements might lead to higher interactions than others. So in the first part of the lecture, we 
talked about feature interactions and the feature interaction problem. We talked about wanted and unwanted interaction, about static and dynamic interactions, and about the degree of an interaction in terms of is it an interaction between one or more features, is it a one-wise, pairwise, or higher order interaction. Uh, then we looked at several examples, examples that have nothing to do with source code. We, so we see this in our everyday life, these feature interactions. Uh, once you start thinking about feature interactions, you will see them all the time uh, in, your, uh, in your life. But uh, we, we also see, uh, have looked at examples where this is a problem for software product lines. There's some for the reading. There's a dedicated chapter on this topic. And you could think of whether you've seen other or you know of other uh, examples. And if you listen to this course together with other people, then it might be good to exchange with those because they might have heard some of some other uh, interesting interactions to share with you. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and looking forward to meet you in the next uh, part of the lecture. See you.